Okay, so now we're going to move on to part four of my Warner Brothers Artisan in Lionsgate DVD collection Christmas 2021 edition. Now for part four, which we're going to we're going to look at the Tom and Jerry DVD releases, which I have which I only have five Tom and Jerry DVD releases, so let's get started. Here's the first one. This is a 2004 DVD release of Tom and Jerry Spotlight Collection. Two disc DVD collection. Released October 26, 2004. Producing Tom and Jerry cartoons for 20 years was for me one continuous labor of love, says William Hanna. The Tom and Jerry Legacy, the Tom and Jerry Legacy chases through every nook and cranny of the classic animation pantheon spanning six decades and several famous directors. Looney Tunes icons Frizz Freeling, Tex Avery, and Chuck Jones all played their part. But the endearing cat and mouse team was the brainchild of William Hanna and Joseph Barbera. Their first short, Puss Gets the Boot, in which Tom was called Jasper, was released with little fanfare. Fellow animators did not consider a cat pursuing mouse scenario too exciting or original. But when unleashed on exhibitors and audiences, the hilariously diabolical rivalry delighted everyone. This two-disc set of 40 restored and remastered shorts, along with fabulous celebrity, uh, celebratory bonuses, includes nine Academy Award nominees and seven winners. And with this in hand, you're a winner too. Special features include two all-new documentaries. All right, I'm not going to read the special features on here just to save time, but uh, most of the shorts are in full screen, except Touchy Pussycat, The Flying Sorceress, and Blue Cat Blues, which are presented in a letterbox widescreen format. Preserving the scope aspect ratio of their original theatrical exhibition enhanced for widescreen TVs. And this box set, disc one, both discs use the 1996 full screen version. The 1996 Warner Home Video logo in full screen with the 1996 regular strings theme. And then, of course, well, but disc one has the 2004 blue anti piracy warning screen at the beginning, while disc two contains an alternated, digitally generated version of the 1980s FBI warning screen from Warner Brothers. Hey. Next up, is the 2005 DVD release of Tom and Jerry Spotlight Collection Volume 2. Which, like the Looney Tunes Golden Collection Volume 3, the Tom and Jerry Spotlight Collection Volume 2 also has an introduction by Whoopi Goldberg at the beginning. The minute you saw a cat and a mouse, half your story was done. You know there will be a conflict, and you will have a chase, says Joseph Barbera from Hanna-Barbera Cartoons by Michael Mallory. Trends come and go, but the chase is eternal, just like the evergreen appeal of Animation Supreme Cat and Mouse Team. This second spotlight collection of Tom and Jerry cartoons, capers, boasts 40 classic shorts, including Puss Gets the Boot, in which Tom was called Jasper. This delicious assortment covers their golden years, including three Academy Award win 
nominees and seven in the rarely seen widescreen cinemascope. It includes spiffy character profiling special features. Get ready to duck, weave, jump, and laugh as the hopless feline and the wily rodent take each other on. I kind of wished, um, I kind of wished Hanna-Barbera brought Looney Tunes as well in beginning in the 1940s as well. What would that be like if Hanna-Barbera brought in Looney Tunes beginning in the 1940s, whereas in the 1930s it would just be Warner Brothers alone, and then Hanna-Barbera would join Looney Tunes beginning in 1940? How would you, what would you feel about that? It says, Pet Peeve, Southbound Duckling, Tom and Cherry, Muscle Peach, Beach, Tom, uh, Downbeat Bear, Mucho Mouse, and Top Watchers are presented in letterbox widescreen format, preserving the scope, aspect, ratio of their original theatrical exhibitions. All except Pet Peeve and Southbound Duckling are enhanced for widescreen TVs. Well, Looney Tunes was not owned by Hanna-Barbera, but... I was using the imagination, what if Hanna-Barbera owned Looney Tunes beginning in the 1940s, in addition to promote Tom and Jerry? Now, both discs use the 2004 Blue FBI anti-piracy warning screen, and the 1996 Warner Home Video logo in full screen with the 1996 regular strings theme at the beginning. And this does have the Turner Entertainment Company logo on the back cover for those Tom and Jerry DVD releases, along with very old films from MGM's library like The Wizard of Oz, and very old films of Warner Brothers released before 1950, like Sergeant York. Next up is the 2012 DVD release of Tom and Jerry in the Doghouse. Tom and Jerry let the dogs out in this canine collection. Tom and Jerry are at it again, but there's a new ingredient in their classic chase recipe. Just add Spike. It's Hound Heaven is everyone's favorite bulldog Spike and Sun Tyke gets in on the fun in this Pup Pack collection. These 22 doggy delightful shorts are guaranteed to have fans howling. Join Spike and Tyke in their many dealings with the Fast and Furious duo. Whether Spike's on guard duty or simply trying to catch a nap, you can bet that Tom and Jerry's fur field antics are guaranteed to rattle his cage. And an angry Spike usually spells hard times for Tom, with a little coaxing from Jerry, of course. Look, leash up for some canine fun for the entire family. Cartoons include 24 Karat Cat, Destruction Junction, Beefcake Tom, Bennett Lake Thomas, Tom's Photo Finish, Game Set Match, Cat Napping, Cat Fishing, The Bodyguard, Quiet Please, Solid Serenade, Sliced Stuff Pup, Puddin' on the Dog, The Framed Cat, Top Watchers, The Invisible Mouse, Pet Peeve, Feeding Time, DJ Jerry, Beach Bully Bingo, A Life Less Guarded, and The Dog House. And this one says, presented in a format preserving the aspect ratio of some shorts original theatrical exhibition, while formatting that of others to fit your screen.
Here's the disc for Tom and Jerry in the doghouse. Well, to my knowledge, a uh, spike. Spike might be the enemy, but uh, and like the Looney Tunes show, season one, volume two, this has the 2007 piracy warning screen and the zoomed-in widescreen version of the 1996 Warner Home Video logo with the 1997 dual synthesized strings theme. Next up. is 2016 DVD release of Tom and Jerry Double Feature containing Shiver Me Whiskers and Whiskers Away. This one says, For Tom and Jerry Shiver, two times the cat and mouse fun. For Tom and Jerry Shiver Me Whiskers, it says, Hi Jinx Ho, it's a swashbuckling pirate adventure that Tom sets sail as a lovely cabin cat for the biggest, baddest pirate on the high seas. The infamous Captain Red and his bossy talking carrot in Tom and Jerry Shiver Me Whiskers. Tired of swabbing the deck all day, Tom thinks his luck has changed when a mysterious bottle containing a treasure map washes on board. But Tom's dream of finding the treasure for himself is ruined when he discovers the bottle also contains a starway. When he discovers the bottle also contains a stowaway mouse, Jerry. Poor little Jerry has been guarding the treasure map and now has a greedy cat on his paws. Will Jerry be forced to walk the plank? Will Tom make it to the deserted island first? The race is on. And Tom and Jerry must work together to get past coconut throwing monkeys and a giant slimy octopus and to outsmart the pirates to find the buried treasure. Mark Hamill, Captain Jimmy, Charles Nelson Riley, Kevin Michael Richardson, and Wallace Shawn lend their voices. Tom and Jerry Whiskers Away says, Catch everyone's favorite cat and mouse team as they race from one exciting adventure to another in the world-class collection of unforgettable episodes. From Italy to Texas and everywhere in between, these 10 X's action-packed cartoons showcase the best traps and funniest escapes in animation history. Join the original Tom Cat and his pal Jerry Mouse for non-stop antics, and one hilarious trip. Yeah. Oh, and about Kevin Michael Richardson, he appeared as, he appeared as the voice of Bruno in Clifford the Big Red Dog, who painted the playground in the episode Doggy Detectives. Or... Here's disc one, which shows Tom and Jerry Shiver Me Whiskers, and disc two, which has Tom and Jerry Whiskers Away. Now, disc one uses the 2004 blue FBI anti-piracy morning screen, and the 1996 Warner Home Video logo in full screen, with the 1997 dual synthesized strings theme. Disc two, Tom and Jerry Whiskers Away, contains the full screen version of the 2002 variant of the 1996 Warner Home Video logo with the AOL Time Warner Company byline and the regular strings theme in low tone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's the next one, the 2000 and the 2000 and the 2021 DVD release of Tom and Jerry the Movie, which was a film that was released last year. Oh, there should be one episode of of. Clifford from the 1964 series where they meet Tom and Jerry. It's called 
It's called The Great Birdwell Island Chase. It says, best of enemies, worst of friends. A beloved rivalry is, is reunited when Jerry moves into New York City's finest hotel on the eve of the wedding of the century, forcing the event's desperate planner to hire Tom to get rid of him. The ensuing cat and mouse battle threatens to destroy her career, the wedding, and possibly the hotel itself. But soon, an even bigger problem arises and forces Tom and Jerry to do the unthinkable, work together to save the day. This is rated PG for cartoon violence, rude humor, and brief language. In approximately 101 minutes. Speaking of which, what if there was an Arthur film released by Warner Brothers rated PG for mild language, mild peril, and name calling? Call it Arthur Saves Lakewood Elementary. Here's, here's the digital copy and the disc. For Tom and Jerry in the movie, just a plain yellow disc. Yeah. It would be Art for Saves Lakewood Elementary. It would be a feature film. And this DVD of Tom and Jerry the Movie has the new 2017 Warner Brothers Home Entertainment logo with the 1996 regular strings theme in low tone. With the cloud background looking different. What did you think of that Arthur film getting a PG rating? Mostly because of the mild language and the name calling. Binky would do the... There would be a couple of mild D words. And one mild H word in that film. That H word would be said by Buster, and that D word would be used three times. Once, once by Arthur, no, it's like the mild, the, the mild bad D word and the mild bad H word that they used in films like Hero at Large and Bronco Billy when they were rated PG. That D word would be said three times, once by Arthur, once by DW, and once by Binky. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And that H word would be said by Buster. How would you feel about those characters using those? What did you think of me explaining which character would say those words in a couple of times in the film? One H word and three D words in that film. And then there are no more of that. <laughs> well, what about darn? What about darn? That would be it would be rated PG mostly because of Binky's words like 
Or what if what if they used that I word? What if they used that I word like in SpongeBob, like the word idiot or something, like in like in in Arthur at once. That would be what the mild language would be like. <laughs> <laughs> and how would you like how would you like that film to be the only R for film to feature the word imbecile as well? Hmm. <laughs> 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 okay. What name calling should Arthur and what name and the name calling would be done by the W in there. And those like 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 a pinhead and fiddle brain. Actually, you know, that film would be released um if that film was released, it would be released in between season six and seven. Hmm. <laughs> And how would you like Arthur Saves Lakewood Elementary to be one of the rare times where DW cries with Buster and Arthur? Just like when... Yeah, yeah. And it would be the first time to have Alex Hood voice the brain and Jason Swimer do DW. How would you like that film to be the first one to have Alex Hood voicing the brain? What if that film was the only time where was was another time where Arthur and DW was were crying together and the only time DW was crying with Buster because they were worried about snowstorm in time <sighs> Yeah. What did you think of that film being the only time to have DW crying with Buster in addition to Arthur?
Oh, and why not have a few guest stars that were not in the show, like Richard Harris, Emma Watson, and John Ritter as well? For Clifford Saves Lakewood Elementary, released in theaters in July of 2002. Actually, you know what? Maybe John Ritter could voice Buster's dad in Arthur Safe's Lakewood Elementary. It would be the only time to have John Ritter voice Buster's dad. With Richard Harris, who did Dumbledore, playing Buster's grandfather, being the only time... Buster's grandfather makes an appearance. And maybe Emma Watson playing Muffy's sister making an only appearance. Oh, what about Buster? Buster would break the fourth wall and say, say, Dad, are you the same guy who played the, the big red kangaroo? All right, stay tuned for part five, which will look at the Flintstones and Jetsons DVD releases.